Hey guys, this is Vicky from Vivid Talks. Today I'm bringing on a special guest, Jeannie Weenie from Canada. She's a TikToker that's grew her following in one month to one million followers. She primarily focuses on storytelling and takes a lot of suggestions and advice from her followers. And her primary topic is telling stories about her cabin crew days. So I hope you enjoy some of the insights she'll be sharing in this interview. Hello, welcome Jeannie to Vivid Talks. I'm so excited to have you here today with our interview. Hello. Do you want to introduce yourself and let us know what type of creation you do? My name is Sandra Jeannie Kwan. So I'm based out here in Canada, in Vancouver. Yay for Canadians! My husband's from LA, so I kind of go back and forth. Not right now because of COVID, but the type of content I do right now is mostly related to cabin crew. So I create content on TikTok. I also share it on my Instagram. Working on YouTube. Haven't really gotten there yet, but... <laughs> You'll get there. You know, I'll get there. I'll get there. YouTube is a whole different beast. I tried. It's, it's very difficult. <laughs> I guess you have to spend some time learning each different social media platform because there's slight nuances and differences to all of them. Right. So. When did you start becoming content creator? First downloaded TikTok um, back in December. Almost a year. Oh, okay. Yeah, but that was Whoa. just fun. I was downloading it with my friend who told me to check out this app. He's like, trust me, it's really funny. <laughs> so I did and I was like, oh my God, this is the best app. It's so good. It's so real and raw, like footages of people just doing everyday things and just having Great. a blast doing it. And I just loved it. And then I started creating my own videos, which were so bad. Like they were oh. so cringy, <laughs> it was so bad, but I didn't care. I was like, okay, this is so fun, right? I was posting once in a while. You know how the dance stuff and all the trends. That oh yeah, the, the dance. Yeah, and the... I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to do it so cringy, okay? I, 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 I wasn't good. And I started becoming more and more into the content creation when quarantine hit. So I was stuck out right. in LA. We had curfew back then. We had nothing. To do. Oh, yeah. We weren't allowed to go out. We can only get groceries. It was really bad. And it started getting to the point where everyone was kind of hitting depression. It was just really bad. The only thing that was keeping me happy and sane was TikTok. Just kind of use that as a way to express myself and how I felt and what was going on during that time. Yeah, from there, it just kept going. Skyrocketed? Yeah, it just kept going. <laughs> wow. So how often do you post? Like, I know you said you kind of posted once in a while back then when you were just kind of playing around with it. So nowadays, how often do you post? During my peak, during quarantine time, I would post like six, seven videos a day. Holy. Yeah, six, seven videos That's a, a day. That's a lot. All I did was TikTok all day that sounds like a fun job yeah, well it wasn't really a job back then i was just doing it for fun i was like oh there's nothing oh, okay. oh this is funny so i would just keep posting making videos and keep posting right right now a little bit different i do post on average just once once a day once a day one or two a day yeah i don't do the six seven or more it's a little <laughs> <laughs> too intense it's too much it's a little too much now <laughs> you post once a day how much time do you spend on like filming and editing the video these days, I put a lot more thought into what I post than what I did before. So take maybe 30 minutes or so or throughout the day, I'll just think of brainstorm of ideas and how I get to them. I have a spreadsheet. So whenever oh. I do my day and I think of something or something funny happens to me on that day or whatever it is, I quickly write it down like this would be a fun skit. And so I post it down. And then when it comes to the day of the filming, it all depends how I feel that day. So, oh. yeah, and then I'll choose from my ideas. So I'll be like, oh, okay, actually, yeah, I'm in a good mood. I feel like, you know, laughing about this. And then so I'll pick something that matches my vibe that day. Right. And then I'll go ahead and film. It can take anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour for the full filming and editing. On average, I say half an hour. That's pretty good. I know usually it takes me about an hour to get the whole thing done. When I'm more intense, it takes me about two hours. So half an hour is really good. A lot of people on TikTok use a lot of graphics and put a lot of effort into it. Mine is just green screen. I'm literally just there. Yeah. Like, ah, you know, <laughs> just doing stupid things or just talking. And so editing is very simple for me. I try to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, the ones that where I have like a bazillion costume changes because I play everyone, all the characters. So if I have to keep changing and one, I changed like eight times. Like that oh took me God. a while. That took me a long time. Right, right. So it all yeah. depends. Yeah. So do you film in, in the TikTok app or do you film in a different video program on your phone? I or? film everything on TikTok. 
Oh, and everything's edited in there too then, right? I've tried different apps before. I don't really know too much about TikTok and the algorithm. I've noticed that when I use different apps to edit, and then I upload it that way, the videos don't do very well. I don't know why, it's just what I've noticed. There's one app that I used, which was CapCut, and that yeah. is actually owned by ByteDance, which it owns TikTok, right? So, and you can upload directly. So I've tried that and the videos have done really well. I'm not sure if they push those videos to, you know, promote their own app. Either way, like the best one for me, the easiest one is just using the TikTok. And that's what I heard too. I use CapCut too to edit because they have so many like functionalities. Yeah. Has it been doing well? I didn't upload it directly from CapCut because it has the little watermark, like the tag that says it's from CapCut. You upload it, right? There's a function, you know, right? It says upload straight to TikTok. Yeah, that's what I do. Like I edit it and I would upload straight to TikTok. And when it's uploaded, it would have a CapCut like watermark on there. And I'm like, oh, oh you and I didn't, didn't want it. Oh, I see. Yeah. So then I would export it and upload it. Maybe I should just ignore try that just it, deal with it. it yeah okay okay it's good advice uh, why don't you walk me through like your creation process if you thought of your idea what kind of equipment do you use do you like set up like a ring light or well i can show you briefly like right now <laughs> this is my spare bedroom and i have like a murphy bed but i have like a green screen thing set up there oh set up right there yeah, and i have all of my lights and i'll set it up everything on mine is green screen like that's all right. I use. Pretty much I can actually film anywhere. If it's during the day, then I'll go closer to a window if it's a sunny day because it's actually better than all of these lights, natural light. Yeah. Film anywhere because I use green screen. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. So you have like a nice studio. That's really cool. Yeah, a little area. You no, know, like back then you did like a bunch of different comedy skits and whatnot. Mm -hmm. How did you find, I guess, your niche? Because you're doing all the cabin crew stories now, right? For your TikTok. How did you figure out your niche? Well, these are kind of the, I guess, tips for anyone that really wants to grow on TikTok. You really have to be engaged with your followers or what people are saying and your comments. Because there's certain things that you might find really amazing and great, but the public doesn't want it. They don't really care. Right. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. They don't care. You know, which is fine. Like, if that's what you want to do, that's great, right? So what I did was every week I had different content based on how I felt. I had a voting system. So every week my followers would vote on what kind of content I should do for the following week. I would choose characters. They would choose uh, themes. They would choose the environment, my outfit, anything right? One of them was my previous jobs. So I listed cabin crew, I listed retail, and I listed bank. And I was just going to do skits related to them. So everybody voted cabin crew. And that's how right. cabin crew started. Oh. And when I did cabin crew, after the week was over, because I only just do one week, everybody was like, can you please just extend it for one more week? We had so much fun watching your videos. So I did. So I listened to them and I did. And then after the second week, they're like, please keep going. So I did that oh. one. And then after I was like, okay, I promised my OG followers that I was going to do retail. So I'm going to go and do retail. So I started retail. It did pretty well as well. But all on the comments was cabin crew, bring back cabin crew. I want more cabin Aww. crew. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. So I went back to cabin crew and literally within like less than a month, I got a million followers just wow. for the cabin crew. And I was like, all right. I guess I'm doing cabin crew. <laughs> right. Right. And so that's just like, it wasn't me trying to look for a niche. I wasn't. It just happened. It just you happened. listened, right? It yeah. Just happened. Even now to this day, people don't know that I'm not even cabin crew. Like I haven't been cabin crew for 10 years. I'm just telling oh. stories and I'm collaborating with other cabin crew members. They tell me stories that are more current, you know, right? things that are happening now, issues, things like that. Stories, they're all from the past as well. So I try to keep current. Anything can happen on TikTok. Right. Whoever. Yeah, it's very wild. It's such a wild place. <laughs> but I'm still having fun and still going. I love your stories. You have your cute outfits, your cabin crew outfits, and then you have your like green screen backgrounds so inside the cabin. So I think it's really immersive with your stories. Maybe one day in a real airplane. No, probably not for years though. Can you tell us one of your favorite cabin crew stories? Maybe one of the ones that your fans like love the most. Oh, well, the one that, that got the most views or people were like, I love this one wasn't 
my story. It happens a lot, actually. I do remember another crew member when I was flying tell me the same story. One person sees one passenger getting an item. Everybody wants it, no matter what it is. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want one too. <laughs> Right? So that's why we try to discreetly give things to passengers when they ask for it. The funny one was the one where a female passenger asked for, you know, a pad, sanitary right. pad. And then a male passenger was like, I want one, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you give them one, right? And then they, they use it as eye shades. So that actually does happen. Eye shades? Yeah, they put the pads on their eyes and they stick it to the eyes. So I did, I did have a lot of crew. They're like, oh, actually, that's happened to me on my flight. They know what it is? <laughs> you know what? In all honesty, though, sometimes we fly to countries, you know, they don't have access to those items. So oh, they might not know me. what it is. We have a lot of toilet problems, right? Because right. some countries don't have toilets, actually. They don't, oh. right? When they get on a plane, they don't know where to go. Oh no, it sounds like a nightmare. Yeah, so sometimes they'll go on their seat. Sometimes they'll just stand up. You know, I got peed on. Oh. I just did a TikTok today on that too. The one that happened to me was I was just sitting, having my lunch. The crew area, yeah. I just comes up and just takes off his pants and just pees. And then obviously being on the wall and then it sprays and hits me on the leg and I'm just like sitting there eating. Oh no! <laughs> Yeah, so extra I mean, flavor. You know, you know, anything <laughs> happens. Everybody's like, I want to be cabin crew. I'm like, okay, but understand what it really is. You're everything up in the air. Everything. You have to keep that in mind. I guess that's why people like your stories because they're so like crazy out there. You'd never expect it, right? Majority of people are like, what? Seriously? Whereas all cabin crew are like, oh yeah. <laughs> they're like, no, yeah. Oh, that's like every that's other day. Yeah. <laughs> talking about that's mild. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, it's just very God. interesting. And I think that's why the content is very appealing to a lot of people because they just don't know these, these things. So I think if you show a side that most people don't know about and are interested right. and find it like, oh my God. Another account that I just recently found, it was like a, a space, an astronaut. So she oh. goes through everything and I was like, oh, that's amazing. And then she goes through how, you know, they recycle their pee. Wow. So it's very cool. So I think as long as you find something that's interesting, right. they'll make it. Yeah. That's cool. The astronauts making TikToks up in space. Just saying. <laughs> or oh, no, are they doing that? Or are they doing the green screen thing? She wasn't in space, but she is actually in a spaceship. Oh, like on Earth. But there's like so many cool accounts coming up. Everyone's like, I learn more on TikTok than in school, which is true. Right. <laughs> TikTok is like focusing on the educational portion yeah. of the app too, yeah. right? And really pushing for people who are educators. Yeah. Infotainment. <laughs> Super entertaining and I love it. And I just love the fact that anybody, you don't need any experience can do it. So if you have something to teach or want to say, like you can go and say it, you know? It's pretty amazing. I guess it's because it's like really organic and anyone can get out there and strangers can just reach your content, right? You gotta be okay with that though. That's true. Pros and cons. How did you feel when people started knowing you and were you afraid that people would run into you in the stream be like, hey, I know you from TikTok. Like, how did you feel about that? I don't really know too much about that because I don't really go out. Oh. <laughs> Even if I go out, I don't look the same as I do on my TikTok. I have a thousand wigs. I look very crusty when I go out with my glasses and my sweats and I'm in my mask and no one's going to know who I am. You know? Right, right. Only time that I got noticed was when I actually filmed in my uniform at the mall. Oh. That's the only time people will be like, oh, hey, you're the TikTok cabin crew lady. And I'll be like, yeah, yeah, that's me. That was really nice. It was very cool. I don't have too much experience of people noticing me outside. <laughs> Well, I guess nowadays you were staying home anyways for COVID. So. Yeah. so I'm just wondering, like, what was your biggest challenge when you're trying to create content? I think this is for every content creator. Am I always going to consistently post something good or post something uh, funny? And you're always like stressing out about that. When I talk to other content creators, that's their concern too. It's like, oh, all of a sudden people love you and then they're just going to hate you. <laughs> or they're, they're not going to care about you anymore, you know? That is a struggle. I think it's just I'm putting that onto myself. And once I realize I'm like, forget about that. Remember why you're doing this. Remember that you just love creating, that you are having fun. And so not that I don't care about the views, because I do. I do care about the views and the followers and stuff like that. But just remember that 
it's something that I enjoy and post what I enjoy and have fun doing it. Cause the minute that it stops is when it's going to look forced. People are going to know, like, they'll be like, Oh yeah, she's lost her spark or whatever it is. Right. Lost her passion or yeah, whatever lost it her is. Passion. It seems like it's kind of dull now or whatever it is. And right now I don't feel that at all. Like every day I'm having so much fun. Of course, I have bad days too. And those days, I just won't post. I've learned from other creators to create, when you're having a good day, make a ton of videos that day. Oh. So that when you have a bad day and you're like, oh, I, I can't do anything today, you still have videos that you can post that day. Right. Yeah, trying to do that, but it's hard. Whatever you guys see, I just finished filming and I post right away. Live in the moment, yeah. But I am going to try the other strategy just in case. Uh, the last two days, I didn't post at all because I wasn't feeling great. Um, and, right. it, and I didn't have any backup videos. And that's something that I'm going to work on. <laughs> Spread it out. <laughs> yeah. What would you say would be a good piece of advice for someone that's starting out as a TikToker or like a content creator? If you're starting off, you have to understand if you're just going to do it for fun or if you're trying to do it for like followers. What are you posting for, right? If you're just doing it for fun, who cares? Just go and have a blast and post whatever you want and just be yourself and, you know, enjoy the process. Right. If you're doing it for a business, it's a little different. Currently, I'm trying to convert it into a business and that's my biggest challenge right now because I don't have any experience doing that. So I'm learning as I go. But business-wise, there's a lot more to it yes for sure yeah and i don't want to give too much advice on that because i still don't know i'm still learning <laughs> understand why you're posting and what you're posting for and i think that's a good step but really you should be passionate about what you're posting be genuine have fun doing it because if you feel like you're pressured to post it's not going to be good no one's going to watch it you know I'll still watch your videos. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, oh, she's having a bad day, but she tried. Yeah. <laughs> some days I'm just like, oh, I know I have to. And then I do it. And afterwards I'm like, oh, I, I can tell. Even I can tell, right? And there's right. some days you guys will know. I'll be like, oh, she's having a very good day. <laughs> yeah. It's different from Instagram where you can Photoshop everything. Every day is a perfect day. It's not every day is a perfect day. You know. Well, that's why it's so real and like authentic, uh, right? Because you can't, well, I mean, you could, but it's really tough to Photoshop or to fake videos, uh, yeah, <laughs> like to edit it. Yeah. It's really tough to do that, right? For so. sure. For, it also depends what type of content you're putting out too. I mean, if you're doing like a tutorial of some sort and you're having a bad day, no one can really tell you just kind of, you know, showing stuff off. But if your whole image is like personality or yeah, something, yeah. your personality and you, and that's what you're showing, then they're going to know. Thanks so much for taking your time today uh, to chat with me. I'm so happy that I got to do this interview with you. Uh, Thank you so much, Jeannie. Thank you. <laughs> hey, heart, heart. <laughs>